Good afternoon and welcome to WWLP Digital First live stream web interview. I'm Barry Krieger and retirement planning is the subject today. It is important, it is involved. There's a lot to consider. The goal is to build up enough assets that will sustain you with a comfortable income to meet your needs as you age after you stop working. Whether you are just beginning your career or a few years away from retirement, it is essential to plan for your retirement and the lifestyle that you want. While we may be focused on our finances, there is much more to consider as we age, including health, housing, transportation, and long-term care. Joining me today to discuss some of the best practices for long-term retirement planning is Mark Teed, Senior Vice President of Investments at Raymond James and Associates. Mark, thank you as always for thank being you, here. Thank you, Barry. Now, we should mention uh, right off the top that uh, a lot of the subjects we discussed this afternoon each deserve a lot of attention and self-education mm -hmm. and are all specialties in their own right. right. There are no simple answers. And uh, we should also mention that uh, wh whatever we say today, this is not the plan. This is to make you aware of the things that we need to plan for. Right. Just something to think about. Yeah. So I don't even know where to start. So that, let me ask you that. Where does somebody start? I mean, does somebody just starting out a career, thinking about retirement, or it should be in the back of their minds? It should be in the back of their I think when you hit about the age of 50, I think people start to think about it. You know, or maybe when the kids get out of college or they're, you know, they're through their planning. I think that's when people really start to think about it. By the time you hit age 60, people are really thinking oh, yeah. about it. So 50 is probably the right age to start thinking about it. And uh, so one of the first steps you should take is mm -hmm. to figure out what you need, what right? What you need, yep. How yep. does that work? Well, there's kind of two things you really need. You need some investments, obviously, uh, and you need some emotional decisions because, you know, a lot of retirement is emotional. You have to figure out a lot of things besides just how much money you have. But from the money perspective, that's what we work with a lot. And, you know, people, I call it the 10-4 plan. I mean, you have to save 10% of your income your whole life and then only take out 4% of your assets when you retire. That's kind of the easy answer. Uh. There's, there's a lot I want to talk about, but when you talk about, you're going to take out 4% of your assets, but mm -hmm. you also want to uh, have that money invested, so right. maybe it throws off 4%, right? Exactly. I mean, but you can't guarantee that. Right. So you almost have to, to have it invested in such a way over a long period of time so that you sort of know the, the internal returns are going to be close to 7 to 10% so that maybe you can take out four and then leave the rest in to grow. Because that you're going to need, another thing we're going to probably talk about is inflation. Right. So not everybody knows how much money they're going to have when they get right. to that point where they're going to stop working. So right. you really have to work backwards from how much money will you need mm -hmm. each year? How do you determine that? Well, if you start to look at your expenses, like what you're spending on an annual basis, you know, look at it over three years and say, this is about what I spend every year. What am I going to cut out when I retire? And that becomes your budget. And then from there, you can figure out what the number is that you're going to need. And it's a big number. Uh, you know, when people talk about, you know, how much do I need? You know, it really starts with seven figures, Barry. All right, here's a graphic with uh, people that, uh, the money that people spend over the age of 65. Mm -hmm. Housing is the biggest one, it looks like. Yeah. That's yep. where we have to go. Uh, yep, housing is the biggest one. So what else there? You get transportation, food, 13%. Food is less than transportation? Yeah. And uh, healthcare, twelve percent. Uh, now, are these general numbers, or are these what you should shoot for? How does this work? Now, these are just general numbers that uh, were put together by a group that studied this thing for many years, and this is about the way it comes out. Um, so, housing is the big number, and I would I would guess that nobody would win that Jeopardy question if that was asked. I mean, one of the goals is to have your house paid for by the time you retire. Does that happen very often? No. It doesn't seem that way. And now people with low interest rates, everybody's extended until their 80s, they're still paying a mortgage. Um, but the taxes are the big thing. You know, people pay properties. taxes that, can change. If you have a fixed yeah. rate mortgage, you know what that, uh, what that expense is going to be. Exactly. But taxes, they can go up. Property taxes do go up every year. So that becomes a bigger and bigger number over time. So yes, you have to, be, you have to plan for that and think about it. I know people are living longer these days, but we're paying more attention to uh, what we do and uh, people are exercising, people are watching what they yep. eat. Uh, medical advances are such that people are living longer. Oh, yeah. So uh, you have to plan out for a longer time. When you're talking to somebody about planning their retirement, what kind of an age timeline horizon do you give them? We tell them 30 years. You know, if you retire at 70, you expect to live to 100. Um, and you really need to think about it in those terms because most in the old days, our parents, you know, they, uh, well, my parents are still alive, but, you know, a lot of people's parents, they died, you know, 10 years after retirement or five years. Now we need to think about living 30 years in retirement. So you almost have to have as long in retirement as you do working. So you really need to plan. You really do. One thing that most people really don't want to think about 
maybe not planned for is uh, if they become disabled yeah. and maybe can't take care of themselves, long-term care. Uh, care. There are insurances for that sort of thing. How do you incorporate that into your retirement overall plan? Well, when we sit down and do a financial plan with somebody, we really talk about it in terms of it's probably two to three hundred thousand dollars of expenses out there that you're not aware of, that you're not planning for, that you need to either insure or self-insure. You know, if you're going to self-insure, just expect by the time you hit 80 to 90 years old, you're going to have a three hundred thousand dollar bill out there somewhere. Do you have the resources for it? If not, then we talk about maybe insuring it through a long-term care plan. And uh, this kind of insurance is not really inexpensive, is it? No, it's not. It's and not. so the, the uh, ideal thing would be, actually, for someone to start when they're younger. Yeah. I mean, like any kind of insurance, it's yep. cheaper when you're younger. It's cheaper when you're younger. And it's even cheaper if you buy it through a group plan at work. So if that's available, please do it because it's very cheap. And when you do leave that company, you can actually carry it forward um, into, into retirement. So it's a, it's a great idea. But the reality is people don't want to pay for it. They think, not. I don't, I'm not going to need it. My wife and I are perfectly healthy now. It's everybody else, it's right? It's everybody else. People never expect a disability. They never expect the, the lack of mobility is a big one. Um, so they never really plan for that. So these are the expenses that catch people. And retirement, you almost have to spend as much time educating yourself in retirement as you do while you're working. It's a very full-time job. Uh, as I have been finding out, because I'm getting pretty close to the end of my career. Congratulations. So a lot of people... Uh, in my age group are getting lots of mail, especially when yeah. it comes time for uh, open enrollment for Social Security and, oh, yeah. and all the different kinds of insurances that are offered. Um, Full-time retirement age is 66 for Social Security. Right. Some people wait till they're 70, they get a lot more money. They do. What's the, uh, how do you enter into the decision about when is the right time to start taking Social Security? That's a good question, because if you can wait till 70, Every year from 66 and a half till 70, you get an 8% raise, or even from age 62. So the longer that you can wait taking Social Security, the better off you are, the more you'll make in retirement. Um, but it becomes complicated because people, most people want to retire at 62. They wait till 65 or 66, and some people are forced to work till age 70. Um, so it becomes a complicated decision. You know, and, and that's where we help out. That people like me can help people decide, you know, what's the right answer, what's the right time to take it, and how to do it. Uh, before we get into that, I, I want to talk about uh, seeking advice mm -hmm. in, uh, from an investments uh, specialist. Uh, if they take early retirement at 62, yep. uh, there are penalties involved for your benefit. You don't get is everything that you would get. You don't get the full dollar for dollar if you continue to work at that time. Right. right? I mean, you almost take the full retirement benefit, so at 66 and a half, and you just take 8% off per year. So at 62, it's, it's significantly lower. It's, yeah, you take a big hit. So if you can avoid that. Or if you have the resources, fine. But if you can avoid it, please wait till your full retirement age. What's the advantage of, your, I mean, of course, it's more money from 66 to 70. But uh, what do you miss by not taking that uh, retirement uh, Social Security benefit at 66 and a half? Well, it, you know, you do get a 32% higher payout, you know, at 70 versus 66 You and have half. to wait those four years. You have to wait the four years. What do you miss? You know, most people that, that wait until 70 are still working. Uh, that seems to be the more common retirement age now, 70 versus 65. Because um, people are healthier and living longer. People are healthy. They feel good. They're younger. You know, they're more curious. They, you know, they have things they want to do, and, and they have a little more freedom. So uh, they're waiting. But what do you miss? Nothing. But a lot of people are starting to be clever. They're, they're still working, taking the full retirement at 66 and a half, and then they're just using that to pay down their mortgage. Yep. You know, you so can that's pay, a clever you can pay down idea. debt. Yep. Uh, that's a good plan. Yep. Uh, you, you talked about uh, seeking advice mm -hmm. for retirement. This is a specialty. When I uh, was younger, I don't remember all these financial advisors. No. No. And uh, you're a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, there are a couple of different kinds of financial advisors, sure. right? You're an investments advisor. Yep. Uh, there's also, I keep hearing uh, them warning us from uh, on the television say you want to talk to a fiduciary. fiduciary. Help me out. What's a fiduciary? Fiduciary is someone who takes on as a uh, is, uh, takes on the role of doing the right thing for you. So y you become a fee-based fiduciary. So by by signing documents saying that you're a fiduciary and you're, you're a fee-based account, the person who's advising you has to act in your best interest. And that's pretty well scrutinized by the SEC. So people watch over things like that. It, you know, it means that you're doing investment objectives, you're buying and selling things for people within their investment objective you're not getting them to do things that are unnatural for their age so it's almost acting as a prudent man or a, an agent for the person but doing it in a fiduciary where it's a fancy word and for guardian angel almost. why wouldn't I want somebody like that you would want somebody like that 
Uh, so are you talking about fee-based as opposed to commission-based? Commission-based. Is, is, yeah. is commission-based sinful? I mean, what's wrong with that? No, no, that has been the style for the last 150 years. It's sort of going out of style as investment advisory takes over more because people want to guarantee or at least a feeling that the person they're dealing with is doing the right thing for them. And by making it and codifying a little bit, by signing a document, doing a fee-based account, it puts both people into you know, a binding agreement that says we're going to act in your best interest. So let's talk about investments a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, as you get older, I guess the, the general wisdom would be that you want to be less aggressive right. as you get older. Yep. I mean, but do you want to be not aggressive at all once you hit 65? I mean, you, you, based on the market for the last whatever, yep. you'd be missing out. There have been some real bad hiccups. There have been. But, uh, people have to determine how much they can tolerate in the, in the role of risk. Right, right. I, I, I think it depends on the personality. I, you know, I have 85 year olds that are still taking risk because they can afford to. Because they're going to live forever, right? Right, and, and, they, <laughs> and they enjoy the game. They enjoy the process of finding those things. I have people that are 50 are already asking, should I go to bonds now because I need to be real safe? I said, you got 20 more years to work. So it depends on the person's personality and their risk tolerance. Um, if somebody's a risk taker naturally, they're not going to change as they retire. I can promise you that. Uh, if somebody's cautious by nature, that's how they'll approach the retirement years. Yeah, I, th this all lends into that it's very uh, individual. I mean, you have this relationship with your yep. advisor, they have to get to know you. Oh yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and, and there are emotions involved as well. Very, very, most definitely. I mean, we're not supposed to watch the market day by day, minute no. by minute, but people do. And, and, they, and people are, are saddened or frightened when they see the market take a big plunge. They do. They do. And, 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 you know, the funny thing lately, it's been everybody's reacting to geopolitical events, which have nothing to do with the long-term earnings of the well, market. But the market is reacting to but geopolitical. But the market's reacting to it. So they, they react to it thinking, just because something happens, they think they must do something. That's a bad behavior. That's the hard thing for a lot of people yeah. is to take their emotion out of it and to do nothing. Right, right. Sometimes doing nothing is the right thing, right? Most times doing nothing is the right thing, <laughs> particularly when it's volatile. Um, but you mentioned emotions. Um, you have to have emotional adjustment when you uh, look at investments for retirement, but you also have to have an emotional adjustment, you know, going out of work into your retirement years. And that's, that's the biggest thing, you know, I found in the last 10 years or so is that people are not really emotionally ready to retire. They really haven't really thought it out, what they're going to do every day. You know, there's three basic questions we have. You know, who are you going to have an ice cream cone with? Who's going to change your light bulbs? You know, and who's going to drive you around? Um, so those are, you know, those are big questions you have to ask yourself. Like, let's say it's uh, 85 degrees at night and you want to, you know, go get an ice cream cone. Who's going to go with you? How are you going to get there? Um, your light bulb goes out. I go over to clients' houses that are older and the light bulb's up there. They can't climb on a ladder. So sometimes I'll change the light bulb for them, but if they don't have a support system, you know, that, that's, that's something you really have to give a lot of thought to. What you're going to do, who's going to help you, are your, are your family, is your family around, you know, can you stay in your house? Those are questions you really need to talk about. There are so many components to this uh, retirement planning, yes. uh, not the least of which is, uh, is your support system. Is yeah. it family or is it not family? Uh, maybe you have to move someplace where you don't need a car because you can't drive. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, there are more and more services available for people like this. Well, you know, we found that 80% of the people that live in their houses, they want to stay and die in their house. They want to live in their house until they die. Well, that's okay, except let's say you have a place that's upstairs and you can't climb stairs anymore at age 85. Or let's say you have a shower where you have to step over the top of right. it. That's very dangerous for someone. Or a who's bathtub. Your, or a bathtub, yeah. So, you know, you need to modify your house. And will people do that? I'm not sure. So those are the things you really need to sort of approach retirement with a game plan. So uh, there's uh, Medicare. Medicare. Uh, and, and again, we're not really telling you what to do. This is not, we're not giving you all this advice. We're just trying to give you things to think about. Yep. But as we age, we need to uh, think about Medicare and health care coverage. The government does provide some coverage for us. They do. Uh, Medicare Part B. Well, yep. when we're 65, whether you're working or not, you have to sign up. Right, you do. You that's, have to sign up. That's part A. That's part A. Yep, that's the free part. Yep. Um, you know, it's gotten so complicated that our, our company actually provides a free service for people um, through a different company. It allows us to, to, to put in all the particulars for that person. What they James. Yeah, what they spend on pharmaceuticals, what they spend on hospital last year, and we'll actually advise them as to what plan they should take because it's gotten so complicated. Nobody wants to make the wrong move. 
And again, this is individualized. Very uh, individualized. I mean, uh, what's good for this person, what's good for me, may not be good for the next person yep. who's 66 yep. or 68 yep. or 69. Uh, but, and there are so many choices. And this is the mail that I was talking about that I get two times a year. <laughs> and, uh, and you're just bombarded with it bombarded. by uh, well-known names of insurance companies. Sure. And you open these, these brochures, and there's endless choices. Right. I mean, how is a person supposed to make sense of this? They don't. You need help. They don't. You need help, and you're afraid to make the wrong decision, but most likely you'll make the wrong decision, so you choose the most safe thing, maybe not what's best for you. So we're starting to realize more and more that people really need help. They need help with Social Security, too. So yeah. those are the two biggies, those government programs that are so complicated, and you just don't want to make the wrong move. And we got to hope that the money's still there by the time we get to retirement, yeah. right? Yeah. Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, we tell people, you know, in retirement, Think about this. When was the last time you did something for the first time and you got it right? You know, you only retire once. You just don't want to make the wrong choices. Well, and with regard to Medicare choices, you can change after you've you made can. one choice. You can. You Most just, people don't, though. And, you, and there are penalties if you don't sign up. Right. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Financial penalties. Financial penalties. They, they will charge you for that. Um, so it's important to sign up. And it's important, and they will take the premiums out of your Social Security benefit, which is another reason to either work longer or make sure that Social Security benefit is bigger than, uh, exactly. than smaller. Exactly. Uh, how conservative people need to be in, uh, in retirement? And, and how do you determine when you have enough money? That, that's a question I'm curious about. Well, again, it goes back to your expenses. If, if you generate... Um, so, so you work back from that. What do I need? Yep. And then figure out... Right. How can I make it work with what I have? Right. If you live a very affluent lifestyle and your expenses are six figures and you're not making six figures, you're in trouble. So the, the exact opposite, if you're, you know, if you're, if you only need $30,000 and you generate $100,000 a year, you're fine. So it all depends on your expenses, I think, is, is whether you can be conservative or not. Most people um, that I deal with are in pretty good shape, but it, it, it comes down to you have to look at your own situation and say, what am I comfortable with? What kind of decisions am I going to make? I'm 65 now. It's easy to make a decision now, but at 85, when may I'm cognitively impaired a little bit, how will I make decisions then? So again, this is a very long, you know, very long track. It's a long track and it's very individualized, which yeah. is one more reason why you need to find the right person to work with you to advise so. you. I think so. You know, it makes all the difference in the world because we, you know, people like me can make it easier. You know, if you have a good CPA who knows this stuff, uh, they can really make your life easier. So you need advisors that you can trust. You need a few people. You need you a need CPA. A you need a lawyer. Yep. And you need a uh, you need an investment advisor. Exactly. And you need someone to do an analysis of what oh, you have, oh, what you need. What you need, absolutely. It's and a team. To, it's a team, and you need to keep an open mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you talked about inflation. How yep. does inflation hurt us? I mean, I really haven't heard that we're experiencing a lot of inflation lately. Is this an unusual time or do I have it wrong? No, this is an unusual time. We're in very low inflationary market right now, but if you look at it over time, the historical norm, you know, in 20 years, your money is worth half of what it was. So, you know, in retirement, you're probably gonna get an adjustment down of between 50 and 80% of, of what you have now, it's gonna be worth 50 or 80% less, just with normal inflation. Just to spend on the expenses that you normally spend. Right it's not gonna buy what it used to buy. Right, so when people say they wanna be conservative in their investments, you know, really what they mean is they're just gonna keep up with inflation maybe, and then they're gonna lose purchasing power each year. So they really need to, to have an investment plan that, that takes care of inflation, plus what they need to spend on. So it, it becomes, again, more complicated. So if you're not making money, you're losing money. If you're not making money, you're going backwards. You, you don't want to say you're losing money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to. How about managing those withdrawals from your retirement fund? Yep. Uh, that's another decision that that's has to be made, decision. and you have to figure out what that number is. It's another decision. Now it's even more complicated because we have Roth IRAs, regular IRAs, which require distributions at age 70 and a half. You've got a taxable account, and you've got to figure out a way to take the income from each account that's most tax beneficial to you based on current tax laws. Right. So even that's complicated. Um, and you know the, the rules of taking money out are a lot different than the rules of putting it in. You know they have required withdrawals. Yep. Uh, RMDs. RMDs. Yep. Yep. So at age seventy, you have to take about three point one percent of your. At the age of seventy and a half. Yep. The government's going to want you to start taking money out of your four hundred one k, your IRA. Exactly. Congressman Neal just passed a, a bill and hasn't gone through the Senate yet. But if it does pass as it is now, that required minimum distribution age will go from seventy and a half to seventy two. So that'll help some people. But most people need the money when they retire. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so it, it's okay to take the money out right, because uh, right. you're going to need it anyway. Right. And what people do is they'll take it right out of their Roth IRA if, they, if they're lucky enough to have one of those. And then they'll deplete all the tax-free income for the rest of their lives right away, which is not the smart thing because nobody wants to pay taxes. I've learned that. The, that's the universal. If, if my, I don't know if my information is correct, but uh, Roth IRA is maybe not uh, subject to the required minimum distribution. They're not. They're, They're not. not. That's why people will take them first. But they'll take them first yep. before they get to the age 70 and a half. Yeah. Because once it's 70 and a half, you have to start taking that other money. Right, right. All these things to consider. All these things to consider. Mark, we're out of time. I Ooh. mean, we could talk for another half hour, oh. hour easily. We didn't even skim the surface. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being here today, Mark. We hope that the information we shared today will help you when you consider your individual retirement plan. You can find more information on this topic on WWLP.com. We want to thank you for joining us. I'm Barry Krieger, reporting for 22 News.